So I've had this issue with the PlayStation 3 for a long time now, and that's that I like the system, especially the fully backwards compatible model, but I do not like the controller, the, the six axis, the DualShock 3. It just it did not work for me th that generation. And really, since now we're on to the PlayStation 5, it's basically, hey, what's out there is out there for the PS3. Third-party controllers, even during that generation when it was current, just didn't really cut it. But I have been on, on the hunt for a long time to find a controller that would work. And recently, Retro Fighters actually released one and sent it over to me. And this is an updated version of their Defender controller that seems to specifically target the PlayStation 3. And uh, I got to say, I think this is finally the one, or at least a big step in the right direction, and I wanted to go over that here today, so if you guys enjoy the video, make sure you like it and subscribe if you're new. In the interest of full disclosure and transparency, this controller was sent out to me by Retro Fighters. I didn't really ask for it, it just kind of showed up one day and caught my eye when it mentioned PlayStation 3. So we'll start off with an unboxing for the Defender controller. You'll notice at the top it says compatible with PS3, PS4, and PC, but I would argue this is mostly being targeted towards the PS3 as obviously there are better controllers most likely you can use for the PS4 or the PC, especially since it does have the limiting factor of needing to be wired when using it on PC. As for PS3 and PS4, you can connect through Bluetooth, which is a big positive here for PS3 since you don't need any kind of USB uh, like dongle or anything to plug into it. It also has pressure sensitive buttons, six axis functionality, and vibration feedback support. Opening up the box, is, it is the standard Retro Fighter unboxing that we've already done with other controllers from them, and that includes the controller, a USB-C to type A cable, and a manual. We do have a styrofoam wrap around the controller here, and when removing it, we have what looks very similar basically almost the same, to their previous Defender controller. The big upgrade here is indeed that Bluetooth functionality that goes far beyond just the idea of it being a wireless overall solution, as the PS3 does need that Bluetooth functionality for a couple of features that we'll go over here. Otherwise, though, looking at the front of the controller, we have the symmetrical joysticks, a fairly large D-pad on the left, and then our typical PlayStation face buttons on the right, start, select, turbo, and clear buttons along with home on the middle. On top, we do have our USB Type-C plug-in charging as well as snapshot buttons there, and L1, R1, L2, and R2 for our shoulder buttons. On the back, there's not much going on other than just a reset button. I guess if you have some sort of weird issue with the controller, you can press that and it'll essentially factory reset the whole thing. The controller itself feels pretty good in the hand and they do have sort of this texture around the back third of the controller where you would grip. The D-pad does press well and I think the biggest part about it is that it is a larger D-pad, so it's pretty easy to press any of the buttons without accidentally pressing maybe up when you're pressing right or any of that. And it has has a nice pivot point in the middle so for the most part I would say this is at least an average to maybe slightly above average d-pad the joysticks have good tension to them and I just like the concave nature of these as opposed to the fully dome shape that we had on the DualShock 3 or the, the six axis controllers these just feel significantly better also I think I prefer these analog triggers over what's on the DualShock 3 one those feel kind of spongy but also the one ones here on this Defender controller sort of angle out. It looks kind of like a, I guess, a duck bill from the side, but I feel like you just have better control and better grip, but everything just comes together and I think makes this a much more comfortable and functional controller than the stock PS3 controller from Sony that shipped with the system back in 2006. Okay, so ergonomically, I do think this is a step ahead of what you would normally use on the PlayStation 3, whether it's from first party or even third party controllers. But the big question is functionality. Could this actually replace your standard six axis or DualShock 3 controller? And well, there's a few things we have to check out here first. Number one, can it turn the PS3 on from sleep mode or standby mode with the red light, and I'm happy to say, yes, it can. You will have to initially sync up this controller when the system is on, and all you have to do is just plug it in with that USB-C to type A cable, after which you won't have to do that anymore, other than obviously to charge the controller, you have to plug it in, but from here, you can turn the system on out of sleep or standby, which is great because it, 
The thing that always separated, for me anyway, the third-party controllers from the first-party controller is the ability to pull the system out from standby and get started right away without having to walk up to the system or you even use a first party controller to turn it on. But the biggest thing I was curious about here, as they talk about six axis support and, and pressure sensitive buttons, can I use this third party controller with PS1 or PS2 games on my backwards compatible PS3? That's been a big problem for third party controllers with the PlayStation 3 system is it's, I think I've only ever seen one PS3 third-party controller that will work with a PS2 game, but it wouldn't work with PS1 games. It was like this old Lava Glow controller we had back in the day for testing in, in the different stores. Otherwise, though, most likely you're not going to have a third-party controller that works across the board. So, I immediately popped in a PS2 game. I popped in uh, SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. By the way, I haven't really played this game much. I played a lot of Here Comes the Pain back in the day, but I kind of wanted to go back to this generation and play some of these older wrestling games, right? And I'm happy to say it works fine. Uh, you can just use this, start the system up at a standby, jump into a PS2 game, and it doesn't skip a beat at all. So I went through, I played a bit of SmackDown vs. Raw 07, which, by the way, this generation, I don't know if it's just me, Easily the best generation when it comes to wrestling games, right? I I immediately picked The Undertaker. I beat up William Regal. Somehow he kicked out of the Tombstone pile driver, but I ended up making him submit and all this, so no problems there. But yeah, it worked well. And the Rumble works fine with PS2 games. From there, I was able to quit out no problem, went back to the PS3 menu, and then it resynced to the PlayStation 3 system, which is something you have to do when you jump in and out of any of these generation of PlayStation systems. It makes you resync your controller. So I figured I would trip it up at some point. With the PS1 games, I went to Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, which is usually my go to when I will test these different systems out. And once again, no problems at all playing it. So from there, I dropped the PS3 game in, went to Killzone 2. The reason I put Killzone 2 in is because I knew I could test the six-axis feature, which is basically gyro in the controller. They launched alongside of the PS3 with it. It's sort of a, a motion control, right? And it, it really wasn't used that much or really of any significant value. Maybe Lair, I, I guess, was a big one. And that was kind of it. So it's no surprise that third-party controllers kind of stayed away from this. But as soon as I went into a loading screen for Killzone 2, yes, you can move the loading screen around as you would normally with a six-axis controller with the Defender. So six-axis control, no problems there. Went into Killzone, played around in that. And once again, it was pretty solid with the, the triggers and everything. It's still pretty impressive, Killzone 2, how it ended up looking. I, I know there was the whole thing with the, the trailer that they showed off that they accidentally, quote-unquote, said was real-time footage. But still, it running on the PS3, I think it still looks pretty good. Although this was in the generation of questionable frame rate. So I, I still think I'd prefer the 60 frames we're seeing nowadays. Anyway, after running through the three generations, I just started dropping all kinds of games in and didn't have any issues with this controller at all. It played all the PS1, PS2, and PS3 games I could throw at it. I am curious about the battery life as they do, quote, 10 hours. I don't know if the PS3 can necessarily track the battery battery capacity because every time I go back to the home menu to put a new game in or quit out it always said it had full battery and I charged it for an hour or so out of the box and even then I don't necessarily know if it was a full charge but the fact that I didn't lose one bar makes me think that maybe the PS3 is not tracking the battery correctly. Anyway after playing some games let's go ahead and open this controller up and take a look inside so just a couple of Phillips head screws on the back and it will pull right off in which case we can see our battery immediately it's a 550 milliamp hour plug-in battery from there we do have a singular board in the middle with two rumble motors that are soldered to it once you remove that though you'll see a piece of plastic on the back here that houses our typical front facing buttons along with the d-pad the d-pad does have a nice spike here in the middle and that's what makes it hard to push down multiple directions at once as it does provide a nice pivot point on the back of the buttons where we have sort of that rubber membrane that will then press down and make the connection on the cable underneath they do have those domed shaped 
buttons. I did an entire video explaining how Sony was able to achieve pressure sensitive buttons across their entire controller. So if you want to learn more about that, you can check that video out here. But I'm happy to say that they did this feature across every button. And that includes R1 and L1. I mean, they really went all out here to try to give the best compatibility in those PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 games that would take advantage of it. I guess my biggest piece of advice here for Retro Fighters is I would like to see them up the battery capacity from that 550 milliamp hour, maybe up to 1000 and work towards a 20 hour battery life. I'm sure they're, they're looking at this saying, okay, 10 hours or so. For people who are sitting down for an hour or two at a time, what they got to charge it every two or three times to sit down, not a big deal. But there's more room in here for a larger battery. I just think it'd be nice to go up to that 20 plus hour range. And really, I would say the plastics, make them a bit thicker and it will feel more premium. Maybe even put some clips in here so it just feels like one piece overall. That'll mostly just cut down on some of the creaking you can do if you really try to bend and torque at the controller. At this point, they have the functionality figured out and it's just working to improve some of the quality feeling all the way around it. Which brings me to why I think this controller really changes a lot about the PlayStation 3. See, for a while, I'll look, I've look. i been looking around for different PS3 controllers that I can reliably purchase and use and what I end up getting are kind of fake controllers off of eBay or controllers that have just seen better days and you end up having to try to refurbish the entire thing and it doesn't necessarily feel correct even after doing that having something that's at least brand new as an option that has all of that functionality with the six axis support the rumble motors uh, the ability to turn the ps3 on and not need a usb dongle and functionality across all the different generations, if you have a backwards compatible PS3, or if you just have one that only plays PS1 games, which yes, every PS3 will at least play PlayStation 1 discs. I mean, to me, this is a game changer for the PlayStation 3. So yeah, I completely recommend the Retro Fighters Defender, specifically the Bluetooth Wireless Edition for PS3 systems. I don't really recommend it for PC or PlayStation 4 because I, I think the DualShock 4 controller is a good controller. And for PC, there are a, a wealth of options out there. In that case, I would look more towards maybe one of the nicer 8-bit Doe controllers for the expanded functionality all the way around. But it's hard to go wrong with this one if you're really looking for something to use with your PlayStation 3 console. But overall, I'm pretty happy with what we have here with the Retro Fighter Defender gamepad for the PlayStation 3. I hope this is something they continue to look into going forward or even other companies because the PS3 is still very relevant in the sense that you can't play those natively on Sony's current platform with the PlayStation 5. And if you have one that's fully backwards compatible, it's nice to have a third-party controller that works across all the different generations, but if you just have a regular PS3, it'll still play PS1 games, so you can take advantage of that here with this controller as well, but let me know what you guys think about this down below, especially if you did end up getting one of these Retro Fighter wireless gamepad controllers for the PS3. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.